a minimal polynomial for an algebraic number over a field is a polynomial of which that number is a root and which is irreducible and monic, so the leading coefficient is equal to 1. In this video, we're going to begin our search for minimal polynomials of elements over smaller fields by asking the question, how do I discover a polynomial, any polynomial, of which a number we believe to be algebraic is a root? In some cases, it's pretty obvious. The cube root of 2 naturally should match t cubed minus 2. But in some cases, it's less obvious. How do we match a number like radical 3 minus radical 2 with a polynomial, any polynomial at this point, of which this number is a root? I call it a cinder alpha story. The job is to find the glass slipper that matches our algebraic number, cinder alpha. So for what polynomial p over f is the extension, the simple extension f adjoin alpha, the same thing as the quotient of the polynomial ring of f by the principal ideal generated by that polynomial. Ultimately, we're going to need that polynomial to be irreducible, but for now, we just want any old polynomial. So we're going to look at four examples in this video. We want to find that polynomial such that p of alpha is equal to 0. And our examples are as follows. We're going to start with a cube root of 5. Because the cube root of 2 is so simple, you can probably see where this example is going. But the way I want to do it is going to be one that hopefully generalizes a little bit more. Let's begin by taking that element alpha and looking at its powers. So its zeroth power is equal to 1. And that's a rational number, so that's in our base field. Its first power is alpha itself, which we can prove using number theory. The cube root of 5 is, in fact, not rational. So let's start looking at some of the higher powers. Again, these are going to be elements that the extension field has to contain because it contains alpha and it's closed under multiplication. So what's alpha squared? It's the cube root of 25. We can show that that also is not rational. What's alpha cubed? Well, it's a cube root of 125. But of course, the cube root of 125 is 5. And that is a rational number. If we start taking higher powers, we're going to see this pattern continue. The fourth power and the fifth power are not rational, but the sixth power is 25, so it is. The seventh power is not rational. The eighth wouldn't be, but the ninth would be, and so on. So some of the powers of alpha are definitely rational. The rest of them are not. So what we'd like to do is to take these powers of alpha and see if we can find some combination over q, in other words, some rational linear combination of these powers, that comes out to 0. Because what is a rational combination of the powers of alpha but a polynomial that alpha will satisfy. So all we have to do is combine these highlighted numbers together in a way that gives us 0. So let's start by taking negative 5 of the 0th power of alpha, in other words, negative 5 times 1, and 1 of the third power of alpha. That's going to give us 0 because it's negative 5 plus 5. But on the other hand, it's the same thing as negative 5 times 1 plus 1 times alpha cubed. And so naturally, we have found a polynomial, t cubed minus 5, of which alpha is a root. It's going to turn out that this is irreducible. After all, it's Eisenstein with prime 5. But at this point, we don't even care about that. We just want to find any polynomial that fits the cinder alpha cube root of 5. So there's a polynomial that works for the real cube root of 5. All right, how about this slightly nastier number that we talked about in the introduction? Cube root of the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2. We can convince ourselves that that's not rational. So let's start looking at higher powers of the cube root of 3 minus the cube root of 2. That alpha squared gives me 5 minus 2 radical 6. If I multiply by alpha one more time, alpha cubed is negative 11 radical 2 plus 9 radical 3. Alpha to the fourth is 49 minus 20 radical 6, and so on. So we could just keep looking at higher and higher powers of this. Unlike our previous example, though, none of these powers are going to end up going back home into q, into the rational numbers. So it's not going to be quite as simple as the last example was. But can we still do it? Can we still find some rational combination of these powers of alpha that makes 0? If we can, we've discovered a polynomial of which alpha is a root. So how should we do it? I want to focus in on the highlighted in green uh, numbers right here, because they're the ones that have the fewest radicals in them. And hopefully, we can isolate and eliminate the radicals from the 0th, 2nd, and 4th powers of alpha, that radical 6. Let's try to get rid of it. If I want to get rid of those radical 6s, one way to do it is to take negative 10 of that second power and add it to 1 of the fourth power, so that I get 20 radical 6 coming from alpha squared and negative 20 radical 6 coming from alpha to the fourth. And you can check that when you add those together, 
negative 10 alpha squared plus alpha to the fourth cancels out the radical sixes and gives us negative one. So if I want to find a combination of my powers of alpha that makes zero, all I have to do now is add one, the zeroth power, to both sides. And so now I get a polynomial, one minus 10 alpha squared plus alpha to the fourth, that comes out to zero. And so we've now cast alpha as the root, a root at least, of the polynomial t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus one. We don't yet know whether that's irreducible, but for now, let's just be satisfied that we found some polynomial of which this alpha is a root. For our next example, let's talk about the number e to the two pi i over five. This is kind of strange. i here is the complex uh, unit. And according to Euler's formula, e to the two pi i over five is the cosine of two pi over five plus i times the sine of two pi over five, whatever those numbers happen to be. We call this number the primitive fifth root of unity. And that's for reasons that we'll see in a minute. It's called a fifth root of unity. Unity is the number one. Because when we raise this number alpha to the fifth power, we end up getting one. Why? Well, let's take a look. The, first, the zeroth power of alpha is rational. The first power of alpha is not rational. And because we've written alpha as a power of e, it's really easy to take its higher powers. So the second power will be e to the four pi i over five, then we get e to the six pi i, eight pi i, 10 pi i, 12, 14, and so forth. It's really easy to raise e to the something to higher and higher powers. And our question is, are any of these higher powers rational? And we're gonna focus in on this fifth power because 10 pi i over five is equal to two pi i. But according to Euler's formula, e to the two pi i is the cosine of two pi plus i times the sine of two pi. And as any first year trigonometry student can tell you, the sine of two pi is equal to zero the cosine of two pi is equal to one. Therefore, the fifth power of alpha is indeed equal to one, which is a rational number. And so it should be pretty obvious what to do from here. We need to find a rational combination of these powers of alpha that gives us zero. And the easiest way to do it is to take negative one of the zeroth power and one of the fifth power and add them together. So this number alpha that we call a primitive fifth root of unity satisfies the polynomial equation, negative one plus alpha to the fifth is equal to zero. And therefore it is the root of t to the fifth minus one. Is it irreducible? Maybe, we don't know. Right now we don't care, it's just some polynomial of which this alpha is a root. For our last example, let's talk about a base field that's not the rational numbers. It's not even an extension of the rational numbers. Let's talk about z mod three. Let's see if we can find an i-like element, radical negative one, inside of z mod three. Well, no such element exists in z mod three itself. If you look at the squares of every residue mod three, all the squares are equivalent to either zero or one. None of them are equivalent to negative one, which is equivalent to two in z mod three. So because um, there's no perfect square of the number negative one, uh, sorry, square root of the number negative one in z mod three, that means that the first power of this alpha does not belong to our base field. What about the second power? Well, by definition of square root, the second power of our alpha will be negative one, and that belongs to z mod three because it's the same as two mod three. And so what is a polynomial of which this alpha is a root, a polynomial with coefficients in z mod three? All we have to do is take our highlighted numbers here, one and two, and combine them together in a way that makes zero. And in z mod three, the easiest way to do that is just to add those two together because mod three, one plus two is equal to zero. But what does this two represent really but alpha squared? So this, we probably could have done a lot more quickly. If we're looking for a square root of the number negative one, we should look for a root of the polynomial t squared plus one. But this shows that it works over z mod three, just as it would also work over the rational numbers. So now we've seen four examples of how to discover a polynomial of which these algebraic numbers were roots. In our next video, we want to cross the bridge of how do we know that those polynomials that we discovered are irreducible? And are we always guaranteed to be able to find an irreducible monic polynomial of which an algebraic number is a root? Does a minimal polynomial always exist and is it unique? Luckily the answers are yes for reasons that we'll see why in the next video.